Piece of floor has parapets on the roof levels of the structure. So I'd like to show you here, uh, looking at our three-dimensional model, uh, we've got two stories here to our model and just a little bit of a framing outside here, this radial grid. We have a little bit of framing out there. So what I'm going to do is add the parapets in two different ways. The easiest and quickest way is to add a parapet to this top floor, the entire top floor. You can go to the floor spreadsheet and under that you'll see there's a parapet height. And so if we're going to go to the second floor, I can add a five foot parapet height to the entire structure. As soon as I do, you see that the outline goes around the, the edge there, and there's now five feet parapet. I can verify that by going to the column spreadsheet, going to the floor plan two, and seeing that there's now a default five foot. I could alter any of these ones, so I could go ahead and say maybe there's a section that would be six feet versus five feet, and as I do that, you'll see that it does get updated there in the drawing. So we've got that ability to go ahead and change things manually. I'm going to actually just keep this all set to be five, so all of them will be five. But the other thing you can do is on the lower level, so we can go down to floor plan one and just do a section of those there. So if we want to just do this radial section and we can do that by the walls or by the columns. I showed you the spreadsheet way. The other way you can do it is just by selecting the items that you want to elevate there with a parapet. So that wall and any columns I want. I'm going to go ahead and just elevate these using the graphical tools. So clicking on the drawing, drawing tools here, I'm going to go to the column and modify properties and I can say use parapet height of, let's go ahead and say six feet and I can say all the selected columns I have on my screen, apply that. Now just to verify, I always like to see that in three dimensions and I see that the entire edge went all the way from along those columns have now have a parapet. If I go back to floor plan one again, I can elevate that wall. I can do that the same graphical way, so just clicking on the graphical tools for the wall panel. I go to modify wall panels and I can change this here. Let's do six feet in this one. We can say apply all selected and then it will go ahead and we can verify that. So two different methods. One is just to do it as a default around the entire structure. The other method is to do it individually, either graphically or using the spreadsheets. So once you have those parapets in place, you can then solve the model. It will run through the loading and it will carry the loads down the structure. And then we will now take, once we solve this entire model, we'll go over to Risa 3D. Using the director button in the upper right corner with the solution present, we go to Risa 3D. And first thing here we see is the wind loads. So the wind loads we can apply based on the wind speed. Uh, we will be doing this here and uh, we can see we're using a rigid diaphragm. So the program is going to calculate all the wind speed uh, and forces that go into that. So the QH there is the number of, of uh, what we're interested in, that pressure. And as we scroll down below, we see now we've got a wind force generation for floor plan two, which has had the entire parapet around the edge of it. And so we have a picture of that floor plan too, and that was a uniform uh, parapet. So that gets attached here, so it's a base parapet, what we call that, or a uniform parapet. And we calculate the loads for that parapet alongside of the loads for the floor plan itself, and then it's t added up as a total and listed here in the X and the Z direction. So the floor plan one didn't have a uniform, so what we see in the picture there is we actually get a piecemeal of what we're looking at. So one through six, and if you look, scroll below that, you see one through six, and it shows a six feet, uh, showing a parapet at each one of those sections, calculating the force on each one of those parapet sections, and then we see all of these here are going to be added up together in a summation listed as additional parapet. So it will be two different types of methods. If you see a uniform parapet, you'll see a base parapet. If you see more of an individual parapet listed, you'll see an additional parapet. What's nice is this picture really helps us to identify what we're looking at, no matter what, how method you use there. Uh, so we see a totals listed here in the X and Z direction, and these totals are going to go right into the rigid diaphragm. So I'm going to say OK, and we'll go past the seismic. And now this structure here, if we look at this, we can look at our directly at our wind load in the x direction, 
and I'm going to go ahead and just turn on those diaphragms just so we can see and we scroll in and look at those diaphragms and we see now we have uh, 32 kips listed here uh, 30, excuse me, 34 kips and 62 kips applied into the diaphragm in this direction if we change directions we can then see that it's applied in the other direction so 47 in one direction and 47 in the other so it gives us the, the summation of all of the loads right directly into that rigid diaphragm We can then go back to Risa Floor just to see the whole model all together.